Hello viewers, welcome to another episode of Healthy India. Today we'll be talking about managing hair loss. And as we all know, this is one of the commonest problems that we see in our society, in our clinics. Sometimes hair loss may not be significant and may not seem significant to the treating doctor, but it may be of great consequence to the patient. Sometimes hair loss may represent a serious disease or, or something that's happening inside the body. So to unravel the mysteries of hair loss, to tell us how to prevent hair loss and how to manage hair loss, we have two renowned experts with us today in the studio. We have Professor K.D. Berman, who is Director Professor at the Department of Dermatology, Monana Azad Medical College. And we have Professor Poonam Puri, uh, who is a professor at the Savdajang Hospital. Let's start with you, Dr. Puri. You know, we all know that there is some amount of hair loss that happens normally. You know, we lose 50 to 100 strands of hair, uh, what we were told as yes. students, uh, that is quite normal in a day. But to understand the process of hair loss, uh, we need to understand the patterns of hair growth. I mean, the cycle of hair growth. Would you like to explain how does hair actually grow? It's not growing at the same rate all the time, you know. So what are those, uh, those phases of hair growth? See, the cycle of hair growth, it's in three stages. The first stage, which is the growing stage, that is called the anagen yes. phase. 90% of hair are, 80 to 90% of hair are growing and that's in the anagen phase. phase. After the hair grows and the duration of the anagen phase is 2 to 7 years. That's why you must have wondered that different people have different lengths of hair because the anagen phase varies from person to person and is, it is genetically determined. So what happens? So once the hair grows for two to seven years, that is the anagen phase, it enters the catagen phase, which is the transitional phase. And that transitional phase, so one to two percent hair are in the transitional phase and it lasts for two to four weeks. So only one to two percent yes. are in that. Okay. And after the transitional phase, it goes into the phase which is called the resting phase or the telogen, telogen phase. phase and that is the telogen phase is three months. So it's the anagen, the catagen and the telogen. Once the hair completes the telogen phase, then the shedding starts and then the hair fall occurs. So that is normal hair fall, G, right. right? But when we have actual diseases causing hair loss, then it'll, this, this pattern will be interrupted at various yes, points. Yes. So, uh, Dr. Berman, what yes. happens? What are the sort of types of hair loss based on these cycles, you know? Sure, it's basically like, uh, see, what we call is one stilogen effluvium, which we have, Madam yes. has already talked. Yes, yes. So, in these cases, it falls, it's a normal, and the, it will turn again through the allogen phase, and the cycle goes again. So, one is a telogen effluvium, in other ways... But that's quite common, right? Yeah, that's it's very the, common. In fact, yeah. anybody has a stress or any stress means any sort of fever or maybe surgical procedures or anything that uh, within a month and so, uh, hair loss will be there. And in fact, uh, we are we have recently have many patients of post-COVID. Post-COVID patients comes to us like we have many hair loss after COVID. So it is a, a telogen effluvium what we see in these cases. Other than that, we have many disease process also where we call uh, alopecia areata is a one of the disease process where you have uh, hair loss in a patchy way. And another normal hair loss what we have is a androgenetic alopecia. There is a hormonal related. That is usually what we call is a male pattern hair loss. It's a male pattern hair loss. Example, what would say normal hair. So it's a male pattern hair loss. This is hormone sensitive. I think, sir, you can talk better in that way because you are endocrinologist. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a hormone related. we deal with uh, hair yeah. loss and Unfortunately, we often don't have answers oh. and patients, so we have to keep taking the help of dermatologists yes. to manage these patients. Yes, so, uh, basically what Dr. Berman is telling us, there are various kinds of hair loss yes. and they happen at different, during different phases of hair growth. Uh, would you like to add anything about that, ma'am? And would you like to uh, look at men and women separately because Obviously, there is much greater concern about hair loss in women. Uh, men are somewhat naturally uh, prone to becoming 
uh, ball to different degrees. So, would you like to explain this further? Yeah. As Dr. Berman has also already mentioned that this is a patterned hair loss. In addition to what he mentioned, it was alopecia areata. Then there is a condition called trichotillomania in uh, patients with psychiatric disorders who pull their hair. And also traction alopecia where the patients, you know, they uh, use hair bands and all. With, with pull and all, the hair gets lost. But we are right now, we are talking about the patterned hair loss. That is the androgenetic alopecia which is different in males as compared to females. Yes. In females, the patterned hair loss is usually diffuse. There is white parting of the margin yes. of the hairline. Yes. Whereas in case of males, it is androgenetic dependent. It is genetically predisposed individuals. There is receding of the hair, frontal hairline. And there is loss of hair not only on the occipital as well as the temporal region as well as the crown. So there are different degrees of hair loss in case of male. Whereas in females, it's a diffuse hair loss. So uh, when we talk of uh, hormonal control of hair growth, you know, one of the things that we say, it is a reverse for the scalp and the yes. body. So for example, if a woman has excess male hormones, uh, then you tend to have maybe excess hair yes. on the face First or the body and you lose hair on the scalp. Yes. As you. So similarly, normal men, because they have testosterone circulating, they have facial hair but they tend to lose hair on their yes. uh, scalp. So anyway, we'll, we'll come back to that in a, in a bit. So there it's important, especially because women, as I said, are more concerned and naturally so about hair loss, where it is socially also less acceptable for women to lose hair and it is much more acceptable for men to lose yes. hair. Not that men are not concerned these days, men are also very concerned, but yes. still the degree might be different. Uh, Dr. Burman, which kinds of women are more prone to lose hair, I mean this uh, uh, hair loss or alopecia? Basically women who is in on stress, one is one thing. Stress is one condition where you can have easily yes. hair loss. Other yes. than this is if woman has some hormonal conditions like PCOS, what we call, uh, that can gives like what you have already said, like uh, you have in hormonal imbalance yes. in that cases. So in those cases, uh, the, those females can have hair loss diffusely over the scalp and they can have extra unnecessary hair growth over the face. So this is one of the co most common condition what we see in a female who, who came with, to us with the hair loss. So uh, that can be particularly distressing because yes. that happens in younger women and mm -hmm. girls and it's not. Uh, what about uh, other factors in women uh, for yeah. hair loss? See. Uh, First of all, uh, there are various causes of diffuse hair loss, as mentioned by Dr. Burman, that uh, post-pregnancy also, yes. that is telogen if you PM, once few weeks after delivery, there is a lot of hair loss. It's quite common. It's yeah. almost universal. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. we know we are leading a very stressful life. Yeah. So following stress, maybe because of exams, you know, or because post-surgery also, lot of stress is there. People undergo lot of hair loss. As we have seen, a lot of COVID patients came with showing bunches of hair following COVID and there was significant hair loss which was very distressing for the patient. The other factors can be thyroid patients so of thyroid me, disorders. So COVID hair loss yes. uh, should come back after a few yes. months. Like, after so six, does hair regrow like when you have COVID yeah. kind of situation or stressful yeah. situation Those causing hair? hair usually regrow. In fact, but it may take six to nine months. months. Those so, are regrow usually. So, so one important point is that COVID ke baad aapko hair loss hua hoga shayad bhot log ko hua hai. Humne OPD mein dekha hai patients jo bhot parishan ho jate hain. To ag COVID ka hair loss ek stress jaisa hair loss hai. Ye bimari ke baad hair loss hota hai. To aksar isme agar aap kuch samay tak sahi ahar lete rahenge, apni overall health ka khyal, sehat ka khyal karenge, to ye baal wapis bhi regrow karte hain. Lekin usme samay lagta hai. तो उसमें एकदम से परेशान नहीं हो अगर कोविड जैसी बीमारी की वजह से हेयर लॉस है तो सात आठ नौ महीने में वो धीरे धीरे करके वापस भी आना चाहिए द अदर फैक्टर्स कैन बी यू नो वी हैव नोटिस दैट पेशेंट आफ्टर मलेरिया और प्रोलॉन्ग्ड इन्फेक्शन मे बी वायरल इन्फेक्शन और एंट्रिक फीवर दे ऑल्सो हैव टिलोजन इफ्लूवियम लॉट ऑफ हेयर लॉस इज देयर ऑल्सो पेशेंट्स ऑफ थाइरॉयड डिसऑर्डर्स अंडर गो लॉट ऑफ हेयर लॉस 
then patients on certain drugs like retinoids are there are there beta blockers yes, are there even beta blockers so commonly used beta blockers yeah. even they can cause calcium hair. channel uh, yes. uh, uh, blocker uh, drugs are there yeah. they can cause lot of hair loss mm -hmm. in fact uh, anemic patients yes yes, yes they can Very also important. have diffuse hair loss in female if so in fact that is a common cause yes, is, uh, and anemia. we'll come back to how we investigate and treat these patients but it is true that that uh, when we have deficiency of iron or anemia that's also yes. an important cause overall nutrition overall yes, nutrition yes. poor nutrition results in hair loss and one more thing i would like to point out lot of people they are going on binging they go, uh, sorry they go mm. for starvation mm. diets mm. and all and sudden starvation also there is nutritional deficiency yes. and that yes. can cause lot of hair loss yes, so you know, following very excessively strict diets yes. or fad diets yes. that remove some of the nutrients from the yes. diet, that can also lead to some degree of hair loss. Yes. And sometimes we just overlook those things. You know, mm. it's, it's, I think it's important. And again, it's, uh, what you mentioned about hormones is fairly important here, uh, both in terms of women who have, or girls who have excess androgens or male hormones like PCOS girls, but also in terms of thyroid. Now, the important thing in thyroid is that both hypothyroidism, that is under-functioning of the thyroid gland, and hyperthyroidism, that is over-functioning of the thyroid gland, both can cause hair loss. But again, hair loss produced by thyroid is classically reversible. And once the disease gets under control after a period of time, it should reverse. So, uh, I think it's important to understand that some causes are natural, some are clearly related to diseases in the body and when we treat those conditions, very often we can reverse the hair loss. We'll be back with more after a short break. Welcome back after the break as we continue our discussion about hair loss. So what we've discussed so far has largely been in the telogen effluvium uh, area. But we know there are causes of anagen effluvium and anagen hair loss. Uh, Dr. Burman, would you like to uh, suggest how should we approach that? What are the common causes? Those are the patients who has on treatment of various diseases. Like uh, patient is on uh, chemotherapy patient is on antitubular therapy, those therapy can cause us anogen hair loss. So uh, that's a reversible in fact, uh, because once you stop the medications, they will come back. So, but that's a faster hair loss, I guess. Yes, it happens yes, also faster, fast. right? And, much faster. and the recovery is also uh, faster. Would you want to add anything there? No, normally what happens is there the hair, in the case of telogen effluvium, there is sudden transition from anagen to telogen phase. The hair grows into resting phase and then sheds. Here it's uh, the, just the reverse, the hair from anagen directly goes to shedding yes, phase. Yes. That is why it is So more the rapid. cycle is broken as broken, I, we yes. were talking initially. The cycle is broken yes. and anagen phase itself, you lose that hair. Yes. And hopefully when you reverse the cause or remove the drug, then it is th reversible. Th th this should reverse. Great. Uh, Dr. Burman, what are usual tests that we should do? So, when patient comes to us and complains about hair loss. So Most of the time, like what we, I advise in fact, uh, in my OPD, so 
I usually advise like routine hemograms where we see the anemia patients. Like so anemia, testing for yeah. anemia is it's very important if you are losing air instead of always looking for esoteric or rare causes. Simple testing for yes. anemia and iron deficiency anemia in particular is very important yes. uh, to delineate a cause uh, for hair loss. Next common test what I advise is thyroid. As I think I, we all know like thyroid is very common in Indian uh, yes. women. So in fact, in during pregnancy also, we do see many thyroid patients. Yes. In fact. Either in most of the cases, they come as a hypothyroidism. Uh, we do see. And then uh, next, we I advise usually like to rule out PCOS. Rule out PCOS means you have to go. I usually refer to gynae patient, gynae uh, OPD, but if you want to, uh, if properly I was at go for treatment, I mean uh, investigation means I usually ask for ultrasonography to rule out uh, PCOS. And these are the three, four usual common tests would I usually ask. No. So, measuring uh, blood hemoglobin, simple hemoglobin and a blood count is important. Um, checking for thyroid is important. Checking for other hormones like male hormones like testosterone and others that we use to diagnose PCOS, that's important. I think those are areas that should always be checked. But other systemic diseases should also be checked. Don't you think so? If someone is losing unexplained hair loss, you know, without any other drug or anything else that person is using? See, there are other systemic causes of hair loss also. So, if the history suggests, if the history and detailed clinical examination points towards that, then we should do battery of investigations. Like in case of late onset congenital adrenal, adrenal uh, late onset adrenal hyperplasia, yes. we do dihydroepiandrostin yes. dione. Yes. So, depending on what the patient's findings are, we uh, investigate according to the systemic uh, disease. So, definitely uh, we need to investigate sometimes and that your doctor will tell you for rarer hormonal causes rather than just simple PCOS. There are conditions which are called late onset, it's actually late onset congenital adrenal hyperplasia or late onset adrenal hyperplasia and some enzyme defects that happen uh, at birth but may manifest little late and they also can present with hair loss. Uh, what about things like, uh, you know, other systemic diseases? Should we be looking at liver and kidney and all those tests, even if there are no symptoms, maybe someone has low protein or other nutritional tests? Because these days, for example, there's a lot of focus on measuring all the nutrients in the blood. So We can do serum proteins also, yes. and albumin and globulin yes. ratio. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel all these chronic disease, maybe liver disease, chronic kidney disease can lead to chronic anemia and that can lead yes. to diffuse hair loss. So, very important points there that you don't need too many investigations for, for hair loss, but some investigations are important because if you find a clear cause, then treating that makes a big difference. Uh, we don't have any real good test for biotin, do we? Uh, we don't, we, it is used all the time and we'll come to that shortly. Yes. But there's no real test for... Yeah, for there is no scientific evidence that there is a biotin deficiency, yes. but uh, it's not an evidence-based approach, but as a placebo or just to... Uh, we usually give biotin in yes. patients of hair loss. Yes, yes. So I'll come to the treatment part. So, uh, after we've done the tests, uh, Dr. Berman, what yes. are the treatment strategies that you adopt uh, for these patients? Especially for telogen effluvium. Which is the commoner one, yes, right? Yes, most the common telogen one. Telogen effluvium. Yeah. Yeah. We usually give supplements. Yes. For an assurance, nothing else. It's even it doesn't require any treatment in case other than assurance. Because it is a normal process, it will come back. As I mentioned earlier also, like... Uh, in COVID patients, usually it, it took maybe six to nine months, but it will return. It, they will, the hair will come back. So, most of the times we don't require any treatment, but for the patient satisfactions, mm. as well as we sometimes, because this patient has just came up from the disease process, I mean any stress or surgical process, he or she might need for nutrition supplements, so we can give supplements. Uh, like multivitamins, we can give that. So, should we be giving uh, iron? Like I have seen prescriptions of iron for so almost uh, people with normal hemoglobin also and they just have a low iron level. How do you, do you, as dermatologists, would you like to treat that? Normally we do hemoglobin and serum ferritin yes. levels. Yes. If the serum ferritin levels which indicate the reserves of iron are yes. less, yes. then we give, I would suggest don't load patient with iron. 
because excess of iron can also cause problems. So unless there is evidence of iron deficiency, one should not give iron. And where do you place biotin in this? I mean, just to mm. say that, Madam are there studies to show that there is any, uh, any benefit? Because everyone that I am seeing, why is it important for me as an endocrinologist? Because biotin, if you are taking biotin, very often that can interfere with the thyroid blood test. So it has to be stopped two days or so before the thyroid test. Otherwise, okay. it doesn't interfere with thyroid function, but it interferes with the testing. And my thyroid patients are often losing hair. So someone has given them biotin also, and they don't even know what they're having. So sometimes we do get stuck in this. So I'm just saying, uh, what is the evidence for biotin? Is it strong uh, evidence or it is just given like, so far Madam was already saying actually, yeah. that is so not far We don't evidence. have a strong evidence because Madam has already said yeah. like, uh, so, but as Madam has already said earlier also, it's a placebo. In fact, placebo more or less placebo. So uh, we are using these agents uh, really to, in the hope that they will help patients, you know, yes. rather than in, uh, uh, for any solid evidence that yes, this is the way it is. Unless a person is deficient in a particular nutrient, it is not likely that the nutrient will help the hair fall. Very often, it's a hormonal cause. Unless you treat the hormonal cause, you will not get a benefit. And if it, an important cause as described is stress. And, and stress, of course, has to be managed, but it's also not one of those things that can be so easily managed. Uh, local care of hair, ma'am, you know? See, as a local care, we, uh, the hair should be kept clean. It should be washed. Depending of, on the occupation, if the patient is working in a dusty environment, he or she should wash it more often. We don't recommend hair dryers, basically. They make the hair dry. We advise not to use too many of styling procedures also, you know, because they break the disulfide bonds and they make the hair brittle. And uh, uh, the massage, head massage can be done. It's a sort of conditioner and it gives a soothing sensation and it's a relaxing technique. But uh, does vigorous massage is what you recommend? Vigorous oil, hot oil massage, do you recommend no, no, those kind of things? It is not recommended. Hot not recommended. Is. But that, those are popular Simple things, that's why I'm so asking. Yes. No, uh, we, we, we don't recommend that. No, we don't recommend uh, that. Does, uh, you know, mm. too much use of, as you said, partially, but too much use of dyeing chemicals and all those things, they also impact uh, hair loss? Uh, they don't cause hair loss. They make the hair more brittle mm. and uh, they may cause certain allergic reactions mm. also. So one has to be careful when using local measures. A lot of uh, publicity, you'll see a lot of marketing about these products. One has to be careful. Don't fall prey to false claims. Uh, and before I move to the final question, one little question again. Uh, do any particular hormones or, sh uh, sorry, uh, shampoos or soaps or hormone-containing substances, do they make any difference? No, uh, no. no. It's uh, like, uh, see, basically we need to clean our scalp. Cleaning our scalp means you can clean by anything which is very soothing to you. That's basically normal shampoo is enough. Not necessarily you need to give any um, costly shampoo or something like, uh, I need this one only. Purpose is just to clean your scalp. See, shampoo is required because we cannot clean a scalp with soap. So that's why we need a shampoo. Otherwise, you can use soap. Uh, right. So, so cleaning, is, Im yeah, uh, is, important, cleaning is important, not these fancy shampoos yes, don't really have important. an impact on hair fall. They may make a difference yes. to your hair texture or yes, something, but yes. not necessarily yes. to hair fall. What about drugs like minoxidil, sir? So that's really help for those patients who is, who is on uh, androgenetic alopecia or maybe hair loss. Uh, there are some other reasons, like uh, because it, it uh, dilates your blood vessels over the skull. So that's, that is the only drugs which help locally. So local application yes, local of minoxidil. Local and it, how long can it continue it for? Can, you can use as long as you want. It's because it's a normal, what I explained to my patients is like, uh, it's a normal process. Androgenic alopecia is a normal process. Like uh, I usually give examples of uh, Ganges. Our Ganga rivers come from the Gangotri and it has to go to the wave bangles. So <laughs> in the means that if you need hairs, like if you need hairs, like if I compare with the water, if you need water, you make a dam. So dam is for your use. 
for uh, for electricity and for uh, farming yes. and all. Yes. So in that way, if you need heaters, you continue to use your minoxidil or any other process which which can prevent your hair loss. So now uh, one of these is a minoxidil. So you can use as long as you want. It can be used for long periods. So ask your doctor if you're a candidate for this drug called minoxidil. But uh, normally the doctor would himself or herself advise you if you needed it. And uh, last point, ma'am. Uh, beyond this, there's a lot of advances in therapy in terms of actual procedures for cosmetic reasons, even surgeries of different kinds. What do you recommend for for procedures? Yes, yes. normally we try medical therapy. If the medical therapy doesn't work, and if androgenetic alopecia is of, you do the grading. It's of severe grade, and when the medical therapy doesn't work, then we resort to surgical procedures. The commonest surgical procedures are, you know, we we are doing platelet-rich plasma therapy. We inject platelet-rich plasma. We do uh, derma roller therapy. Then we do microblading. Then there are lot of procedures. We do hair transplantation, which is a complicated procedure. It has to be done by a person who has expertise. Clean. So there are various methods like follicular unit extraction. That is the latest which is being done. Uh, we do mesotherapy. So these are the various surgical procedures which can be done in case of severe grades of androgenetic or hair pattern hair loss. So uh, as we come to this end of this uh, really interesting discussion, one of the things that I see definitely is it, a difference sometimes between patient perception and doctor perception. And I think uh, in this case, sometimes patients need a lot of reassurance and sometimes doctors have to adjust based on what is important for that patient because that patient may actually be uh, you know so concerned about hair that that may be determining their yes. quality of life so i think we need a balance there yes. but it's good to know that there are common causes that can be managed for hair loss it's also good to know that there are newer techniques that can be used in cases of extreme hair loss and i think it's also important to know that much of what is marketed and shown in the media as preventing or managing hair loss is really not backed by much scientific evidence. So thank you doctors very much for being on the show and giving such valuable information to our viewers. I hope that you will be able to get a lot of knowledge about your hair today. Some of the things that you have always believed that we are saying मिथ्स बोलते हैं वो शायद आज डॉक्टरों ने आपके लिए खत्म किए और कुछ चीजें जो आपको नहीं मालूम थी वो आपको आज मालूम पड़ी धन्यवाद